Hello, this is Sin City Preacher. Uh, You can just call me Brother Luke. This video is The Challenge. In this video, I issue a challenge to everyone who thinks works are required for salvation. I believe faith alone is required for salvation. Then, we are eternally saved. Do you believe that faith in Jesus' atoning death on the cross is insufficient for salvation? Do you think we must also follow commandments, obey, serve, submit, repent, etc., etc.? The list of requirements goes on and on. If that is what you believe, then this message is for you. The ironic thing is that you cannot pass the requirements that you are trying to impose on others for salvation. So, this video is a challenge. Actually, I'm going to challenge you to do three things. I'm going to ask you to apply your doctrine to yourself. (laughs) Since you seem to be so self-righteous, would you mind listing some of the works that you are doing daily? Number two, After you got saved, have you completely stopped sinning? If you say no, then that makes you a hypocrite. If you say yes, then that makes you a liar. Number three, will you explain, interpret, and refute the verses that specifically state that only faith is required for salvation. Works are not required. Some of you say, you must not only believe, but you must also obey. Okay? How obedient does someone have to be in order to be a truly saved Christian. What if they're 90% obedient? Pretty good. What if they're 99% obedient? Well, or are are they required to be 100% obedient? And have you been 100% obedient since you got saved? You are adding works as a requirement for salvation. And therefore, you are frustrating or nullifying the grace of God. See Galatians 2.21. It says, I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, that is, obeying the law, then Christ is dead in vain. And this verse, Galatians 5.4, will also apply to you. Christ is become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. Think about that. He says, Christ is become of no effect unto you. In other words, Christ is not your Savior. You're not saved. Whosoever of you are trying to be justified through the law by obeying and following commandments, he says, you are fallen from grace. You do not have the grace of God. You do not have salvation. Some of you say, but faith without works is dead. Now, if you read that verse without jumping to a conclusion, you will see that it says that faith is dead. It does not say that salvation is dead. 
It means that the faith is not producing any fruit and is unproductive. But it does not state necessarily that the person is not saved. Of course, it is possible that a person did not get saved and they should re-examine their faith. It is very easy to be misunderstood when explaining the connection of faith and works. It is clear that we are saved by grace through faith, not by works. But works do matter. Read Ephesians, Ephesians 2, 8, 9, and 10. It puts faith and works in the right perspective. It says, For by grace are ye saved through faith. You say through faith. It says, And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. It's a gift. Okay. Not of works. Hear that? Not of works, lest any man should boast. But all of you religious hypocrites are spending all your time boasting, saying that you're a true Christian because you're following commandments and you're being obedient and you're submitting to Jesus. But look at verse 10 and you'll see where works fit into this. Verse 10 says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. So we are not saved by doing good deeds. However, we should do good deeds. I suggest you see my video on the difference between must and should. And you'll better understand this concept. So, in this video, this challenge, there are three things I challenge you to do. One, tell us all the good works that you are constantly doing. I suspect the people who are not emphasizing works are the really the people who are doing the most work. And two, tell us that you have not sinned since you got saved. Now here is where all the liars and hypocrites will be exposed. And three, I challenge you to explain, interpret, and refute all the faith alone verses listed in the description of this video. Let's see if you have the character and integrity and ability to actually explain and refute those verses. Or are you going to run away from them and cower? Okay, that's the challenge. The ball is in your court now.